What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great, finally, freaking Friday. You know, it's been an ugly week. <laughs> you know, going into this time last week, we were feeling really good about ourselves and figuring we we're at least going to make it to the divisional round where we usually have our failures. And all of a sudden now, the world is coming to an end if you are a Dallas Cowboy fan. And it's been pretty ugly. We've had all kinds of crazy things that have happened. Um, Micah Parsons, who did not do his podcast, um, when he finally does speak, starts talking about Skip Bayless, who basically kind of threw him under the bus. Um, you've got Mike McCarthy coming back as the head coach. And, you know, Jerry Jones kind of doing this emotional plea and telling you that they didn't want to start over, but they believe in this team and fault goes all the way around and so on. And now it's kind of like the deconstruction of the defense and Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn has now finished his third job interview um, right now and he's got two more left to go. And I dare say that maybe some of the shine has come off of Dan Quinn. Um, our defense was so bad in 2020 with Mike Nolan. Um, Dan Quinn came in, was a brush of fresh breath of fresh air, and seemingly it turned the defense around. The defense was a bully against lesser teams, but coming down the stretch, it's actually, I don't know that it's all Dan Quinn's fault, but he's the one that's going to take the blame. When the Cowboys never addressed the linebacker situation, that and Damone Card got injured the first game and Leighton Van Der Esch in the middle of the season, it never really could stop the run. Now, because the offense is scoring a lot of points, teams per se weren't very often able to just run the football. But the Cowboys definitely got exposed when they had to face better teams with better offensive lines that could run the ball. They just could not keep up. And so now the question is, because the Cowboys have already said that if Dan Quinn doesn't get a head coaching job, he is welcome back with open arms that they'll look forward to having him back. The question begs is, is that the best move? Now, I'm willing to kind of give Dan Quinn somewhat of a pass because I look at it and say, you're still building this defense. It's not complete just yet. You don't have your Bobby Wagner as a linebacker yet. You don't have those guys that can really fill the role. Now, this is an interesting conversation with Peter King and Mike Farello that I do want to share the perception that they have. Um, I'm not sure if I am a GM and a, and a owner, and I'm looking right now at Dan Quinn, if I am ready to say, you're my head coach. You do have the debacle in Atlanta, where they literally fell apart in the Super Bowl. And now you're seeing the Cowboys defense when it comes to crunch time and the question marks that are being made of the defense and not being able to adjust and why we had six D backs against a team that was just literally running down our throats. Let's listen in for a minute. And so I think Jerry Jones was really happy with how the offense went. <coughs> And Mike, we haven't even gotten into this. But my one of my big questions after last week is how valuable really is Dan Quinn? I mean, answer me this question. This guy over the end of this season last I figured it out, it's either 5 or 6 weeks. Uh his defense has allowed 25 points and 353 yards a game. And they were absolutely throttled by a quarterback playing his first playoff game. How in the world does Dan Quinn have no answers for the Green Bay Packers who keep going up and down the field? Make some adjustments, dude. And how to, and then and then this week, how do 19 teams how are they all falling over themselves to interview Dan Quinn go. to be their head coach? And again, look, I like Dan Quinn. I do. Good guy, good coach. But 
I don't know if I would want him as my head coach right now. Look, just the evidence is what has been put on the field, and it's just not working. I, I don't know, Mike. I think, I think so many things came out of that game, so many things. You, you hardly know where to start. That's well, and truth. your point about Dan Quinn is a valid one. How do you even begin to sell Dan Quinn to your fan base as your next head coach when his closing argument to become any head coach is giving up 48 points to the seventh-seeded Green Bay Packers at home following a 16-game home winning streak where they apparently were caught completely flat-footed and unprepared I, I for what was coming? That would not be a comfortable opening press conference in Seattle or Tennessee or Atlanta. Well, not Atlanta. We've already been, been there, done that in Atlanta. They don't want any more Dan Quinn. That's at least one of the openings where there will not be a Dan Quinn interview this year. But it makes it very difficult. And there's already been reporting I've seen from multiple different reporters that Dan Quinn will be back as the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys if he doesn't get a head coaching job. And obviously he won't be getting a head coaching job. I'd be beyond stunned mm -hmm. if he gets a head coaching job because you're not going to get a lot of season ticket renewals and uh, other engagement from your fan base if you say the guy who, whose defense gave up 48 points against the Packers in the wild card round is our new head coach. Now, on that loss to the Packers, let's hear from Mike McCarthy because obviously that was a topic when it was time for him to sit down with Jerry Jones and have a lengthy conversation about the most recent past and, more importantly, the future. Here's McCarthy from a press conference yesterday discussing that subject. Uh, I think we went uh, probably a little bit past three hours. Uh, we talked about a number of topics. I mean, the first topic was obviously the disappointment um, of the ending of the season. You know, went through all the layers of that. Um, then we talked about you know, pretty much everything in the football program. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'll be honest with you. The only thing I worry about is my family. I'm, I'm very, extremely confident in who I am. Uh, I can't say that enough. Um, so I'm, and I'm confident in what we've done here. And, and, I, and I have great confidence in where we're going. And, and that's really was how the, end, it's how the meeting ended. So, I'm like, is there a threat? Can I finish? The next? I, I'm yeah. And not only where we're going, but uh, we, we, got, we got work to do. You know, the job's not finished yet. And, and, and we both know that. There's that word again confidence. That was the word that Nick Sirianni uttered after the Buccaneers throttled the Eagles on Monday night. Confidence. And as Vikram said in the office, confidence is the food of the wise man and the liquor of the fool. You better have something to back up your confidence. And I'd love to know how deep they got into what happened against the Packers. How much preparation, Mike, did you do to scout our tendencies offensively and defensively, to scout their tendencies offensively and defensively? What kind of a game plan did you craft specifically for this game based upon 17 regular season games of film that we created and that they created? Because that's one of the realities, Peter, of the postseason. You better be ready to spot your own weaknesses as manifested by a full regular season of game tape because your opponent's going to be if your opponent's doing it right. That's my big question, and who knows if that came up. Mike McCarthy, what did you and your staff... Well, yeah. It's been a rough week. Now, the question will be is, will this week get better going forward and people will forget or is it going to be one of those cases of that the Cowboys actually do bringing back Mike McCarthy and possibly Dan Quinn? People just say, screw this thing. It's just done. We'll have to wait and see. We'll definitely be talking about this on the live stream at 9 o'clock. Hope you guys join in. It's going to get kind of interesting, to say the least. Peace.